30 second stay at home B-roll challenge. Don't need any fancy equipment. Let's get B-roll. So I'm going to walk through how I filmed the B-roll sequence that you just saw. The first thing I did was I chose a song. It begins with sad vibes and then it gets exciting and epic. So starting out this video, I want to have me sitting here bored and a little bit lazy. And then I realized that, oh, this is a phone in my hand and I can create a video. An essential message of the video is that you can do anything as long as you have any camera. Filling the frame with the phone camera is a way to honor that. So I'm gonna bring the phone up to the camera and then come out of that camera in the kitchen, wiping down my phone. So I'm using the full manual video feature on my Samsung Galaxy S10. I'm doing this almost all handheld and I'm filming myself. And then now we're out. For the washing hands shots from the last shot where we're whipping down, I'm gonna come back down into my hands. I also want to have a shot looking from below at me washing my hands and the water is splashing all over the lens. I'm just gonna put my phone face up in the sink and I'm also gonna be using manual focus. So I'm gonna put my phone where I want my hands to be and so I need to remember that height about right here. And then I'm going to set manual focus onto the plate where I'm gonna put the phone. So then if I have my hand here, it's the same distance away from the phone. And so then as I'm washing my hands, they will be in focus. Turn the water up. For this next shot, I'm gonna have the fruit in the background because at this point, it's still not clear where the video is gonna go. So having the fruit there as an element in the background will kind of hint at that. Also, I'm going to have a timer on for 20 seconds. Figured I would have some fun with that. Peeling the banana and then moving the phone down as I'm doing that. And then that's going to transition into the beat drop, which is going to be chopping the banana. I know the next shot is going to be the knife chopping down. I want the chops to be on the beat because after the beat drop, there's like a dun, 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 dun. I am filming most of this at 30 frames per second and then slowing it down to 24 because I want it in a 24p timeline, but I also want to smooth out a little bit of that shake. I'm actually going to film this one at 4K60 because I want it to be a little bit more smooth or slow. At this point in the song, I think there's a low pass filter, so it goes like and gets a little bit slower before it ramps up at the next beat. Now we're gonna add some berries to this smoothie and my idea for the next shot is there's a part in the song where it goes like whoop. I'm thinking I can throw the strawberry up in the air, split in half in midair and then fall and then we transition into the blender. I'm gonna follow the movement of the strawberry. Part is the one. Nope. One of the things I think is often not talked about is where should you be looking at your camera or phone screen, or if you should be looking at what you're following. I've looked at the actual thing and then I look back on my screen and it's not framed right. Or I've been so focused on the framing of something on the screen that I am not keeping up with its movement. Finding that balance I think is really important. I'm gonna be both looking at the strawberry and then glancing back. It's too sticky. Nope, nope. Is that the one? So the reason I'm doing these whip transitions or like seamless transitions, I've chosen selectively the places where I think it helps drive the story forward and match the energy of the music. I'm gonna cut to the same motion, but with the blender on. We are gonna find out now if it splatters everywhere. We're gonna transition into being poured into the cup. I'm gonna do another whip pan transition down. The phone camera doesn't have as shallow depth of field as a typical camera, but what it does do is you can get really up close to things. Being way back at this distance where everything's in focus, it doesn't quite look as good. There's no separation between the background and the foreground. So getting up close creates more shallow depth of field. For the next shot, I actually want to pour the smoothie and have the phone looking 
from below, but then I wanna make it look like we're coming through the cup. So I'm gonna do a composite of two different shots. One is going to be the phone like this, and then mask the glass in over that. I'm going to take a photo and then probably play with the perspective a bit so that it looks like we're coming through the glass. Now we're gonna come out of the smoothie using a fill to frame transition. Mm -hmm. I wanna do a stop motion of rotating around it. So I'm gonna take about six or seven shots. I want to transition into the end of the video by me picking up the glass and then going back to sit down in the same place where I was originally, except a lot happier because I have a smoothie and I've made a cool B-roll montage. I'm thinking my hand comes in and then I do the same motion. The smoothie's gonna be in the same place when the cut happens so that it looks almost like there's no cut. All right, now we're on to the last shot of the sequence. I was picking up the smoothie and then moving my hand to the left. So I'm gonna be moving like this and then sitting back down on the beat and then sipping the smoothie. End sequence. Let's do this. Once again, here's the final video.